Will we begin? Uh, Still a bit early, yeah? A few minutes. Yes, good night. We have three minutes. Three minutes early. Yeah, yeah we'll wait. Wait, let's wait. So did you celebrate over then, Pooja? Yes, good day. Where? Uh, Saturday we did. At Abac. Yes, good day. Okay. Did Niyam come there yet? Yes. He's in quarantine? He's finished. Yes. He stayed for 14 days. Oh, he's still there in the quarantine. No, he finished last Saturday, Guru Oh, he finished already, yeah? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, now Saki Harini is in quarantine. Really? Yes. <laughs> Saki Harini. I heard also Asa Saki is coming. Yeah, I heard from you. <laughs> also, I asked my grandmother, she said, yeah, she's planning to. Oh. Didn't come, not not final yet. Yes. Anyway, Saki Arini is here, huh? Very nice. Yes, she is already here. <laughs> What's she going to do? Uh, you mean What's Saki it? Harini? Yeah. Oh, she is uh, going to teach in Abeg University, Maharaj. Oh, really? Maharaj. Oh, yeah. Is, yes. she, is she going to do master's also? She didn't do master's yet, did she? Oh, she maybe. finished her master's. Oh, she did it in Canada, maybe. Yeah. Yes, yes, she did it in Canada. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so she's not lecturer also, huh? Yes, Maharaj. They're all in the Abeg teaching. <laughs> Yes, uh, all of them, and like three of them. Uh, maybe Niyam will also do that, I don't know. Yeah, no, I think Niyam is doing in his, uh, his software engineer, he, he get the job. He got the job, oh, okay. Yes, in a company. Oh, oh. Yes. But Sumaduri told me Astasaki was also going to get a job teaching in Abeg. <laughs> oh. oh, that would be very good. Uh, yeah, so many of them. <laughs> okay, so now we'll begin. Yes, you're right. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militan Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Deve Gauravani Precharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasati Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare so we are recounting the pastimes of Lord Krishna 
as described in the book Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And we are on chapter number 12, which is the killing of the Agasura demon. So while Lord Krishna was a young child, he was brought up there, we heard, in, they moved to Vrindavan, and Krishna would go out with the cows and the cowherd boys every day. Krishna is still a young boy, only not even five years old, but he was going out with the, with the calf, not the cows, but the calves, and they would go to the forest every day. So one day he wanted to go very early to the forest with all the cowherd boys. So as soon as he got up from his bed, he blew his buffalo horn, which is like a bugle, boo, you know, a buffalo horn. And he called all of his friends, all the coward boys, to come. And each of the coward boys, they all have their they have a stick which they use to control the cows and they have a flute to call the cows and they have a horn also and then they also have their lunch bag. So it's described there were thousands of cowherd boys and there were hundreds of thousands of cows. So each of the boys they have their own calves, they, they're given charge of, a, of a, a group of calves and they have to take care of them when they go to the forest. So they were all very happy, they're very happy in a very joyful mood because they're going to the forest to be with Krishna. And they always have a good time, they enjoy themselves when they go to the forest. And they're young boys, they play games with each other. What happens? One boy will steal the one boy's uh, the other boy's lunch bag. And then you you give it to another boy, and the boy who lost the lunch bag is looking, where's my bag? And the boy who took it said, well, I haven't got it, because he gave it away to another boy. Just like we play these games here, the young children play games like that here, it it's, comes from the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, Krishna and the cowherd boys play these kind of games. So the world, this world here is a reflection of what goes on in the spiritual world. 
กลุ่มคนที่ที่เราเห็นในโลกวัตถุเนี่ยที่เขาเล่นกันใช่ไหมเด็กๆเ,เล่นกันส่วนใหญ่เกมตรงนี้ค่ะมาจากโลกทิปนะคะมาจากโลกทิปที่Krishna. But sometimes Krishna would go ahead to look to check out the path in front, and then the boys behind would come running up and said, "I will be the first to touch Krishna," and the other boy would say, "No, I'm going to be the first. I will touch him before you." And this way they would run and compete with each other to touch Krishna. <laughs> และเสร็จนี้ก็จะทําให้เด็กเด็กเนี่ยเขาก็จะพยายามนะคะวิ่งไล่ตามแล้วก็จะแข่งกันบอกว่าใครจะไปแตกกิชนาได้ก่อนคนนั้นจะชนะแล้วเขาจะรีบวิ่งตามกันวิ่งแข่งกันไปเพื่อที่จะแตกกิชนาก่อน And when they were going through the forest they play on their flutes and they blow their bugles they blow this buffalo horn and then they will also play like they will imitate the the sound of the cuckoo Oh, no. And when they would see birds flying in the sky, some boys would run after the shadow of the bird, and they would follow the shadow of the bird on the ground. And sometimes one of the boys would sit with all the monkeys because there's monkeys in the forest, and they would sit and watch. And sometimes a cowherd boy would sit there with the monkeys, and then they would make faces at each other. The monkeys would make a face at the boy, and the boy would make a face back at the monkey. แล้วก็บางครั้งนะคะก็จะไปหาพวกลิงนะคะหาลิงที่นั่งเงียบๆเนี่ยก็จะไปเข้าไปในฝูงลิงแล้วก็จะพยายามทำหน้าลอกเรียนแบบลิงนะคะบางทีลิงก็ทำหน้าลอกเรียนแบบเขาแบบคนบ้างบางทีคนก็ลอกเรียนแบบลิง And sometimes they would imitate the dancing of the peacocks or the or the croaking of the frogs or different movements of the frogs how they jump up and down แล้วก็บางครั้งนะคะก็จะทำท่าลอกเรียนแบบกบบ้างนะคะว่ากบเนี่ยกระโดดยังไงก็กระโดดตามกบไปบ้างก็มี And if the frog would jump into the water, boy would also jump into the water after the frog, pretend he's also a frog. แล้วตอนนี้แกงทำเป็นกบใช่ไหมคะกระโดดไปกระโดดมาเหมือนกบพอกบกระโดดลงน้ำ Sometimes they would find in the forest they would find an empty well, and they would call into the well, make loud sounds, and then they'd hear the echo come back to them. And when they would hear the echo coming back, then they would call names to it. They would call it bad names, and then they would laugh. <laughs> This was the behavior of the children, the young boys in the forest. So for the impersonalists, those people who cannot understand more than the Brahman, they they simply think of Lord Krishna as coming from the Brahman. But for the devotees, like these cowherd boys, these cowherd boys who perform pious activities for many lifetimes, they're able to play with Krishna, just like young children. But for the devotees, like these cowherd boys, these cowherd boys who perform pious activities for many lifetimes, they're able to play with Krishna, just like young children. 
Lenka Krishnani. Some people, ordinary conditioned souls, they, they just simply see Krishna. Oh, he's very attractive, he's a very nice child. They don't see who he really is. But the cowherd boys who are playing with him, they're very special people. They've got they've did they've done many, many pious activities for a long time. And now they're able to play with Krishna like his friends. And the people of Vrindavan were also very fortunate because they could see Krishna directly every day. The yogis, the yogis, they cannot see Krishna. They do great austerities. Although they're trying to see Krishna, is sitting within their heart, but they cannot see him, even though they do so much austerity. And jnanis may try to understand Krishna through the Vedas and the Upanishads, but very difficult to know Krishna there. But for somebody who has devotion, who gets the association of a pure devotee and cultivates devotion, then they can see Krishna face to face directly. But they never think of Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They just think of him as their friend. They have pure love for him and they just think of him as their friend. So, one day while Lord Krishna was in the forest with his friends, this one Aga, Aga means sin, sinful demon, he, he, he came looking for Krishna. He didn't like to see Krishna playing in the forest. He saw, he saw Krishna and the cowboys. boys, they were so happy, they were enjoying themselves. And this demon was very envious, he hated Krishna, he wanted to kill all of them. This, this demon was so powerful that even the demigods in heaven were afraid of him. So the demigods were always thinking, when will this demon be killed? The demigods, they were drinking nectar, but they were worried about their own lives because this demon was so powerful. They were afraid this demon may kill them. But 
But the cowherd boys who are playing with Krishna, they're not afraid of the demons because they know Krishna is there, Krishna will protect them. So this demon Aga, he was the younger brother of Putana and Bakasura, who had both been killed by Krishna earlier. So because Krishna had killed the brother and sister of Agasura, this Agasura was very determined that now I'm going to kill him and I'm going to kill all of his friends and their calves as well. So Agasura was a friend of Kamsa and Kamsa had sent him there to try to kill Krishna. And Agasura thought, if I kill Krishna and all the cowherd boys, then all the people in Vrindavan, they will also die because their children, all their, all their sons are dead. So they won't want to live anymore. They'll give up their life. Mother and father naturally very attached to their son. And if the sons are killed, then they will also want to die. They won't want to live. So Aga thought, I'm going to kill all these boys. So Agasura has got yoga powers and he used this yoga power Mahima to make himself very big. He made himself into a big python, a big snake. So this Agasura became so big he was eight miles long and his his one his lower lip was on the ground and his upper lip was up in the clouds. It was so huge. So he opened his mouth, it became like a big mountain cave, and he thought, let Krishna and Balaram and all these cowherd boys, let them come in my mouth and I'll swallow them. So when he opened his mouth, the teeth, his teeth inside his mouth were like, they were like mountains. And when he would breathe, there would be this horrible smell of the flesh from all the dead bodies which he'd been eating. 
So it was a horrible smell coming out from inside the mouth of the big snake. And he was breathing, the, the air coming from inside was like a hurricane, it was a very strong wind, you know, and with this horrible smell. So the boys were at first frightened, they thought, this is horrible, who is this? Some of the boys, they thought this, this big snake was a statue, they thought it wasn't real, they thought it was just a statue. But then they saw this breathing and it's got big eyes which are like fire. And they understood, oh, and then, he, you know, because he opened his mouth, then they understood he was alive. And then they saw, they, th they thought, yeah, he's opened his mouth. That means he wants to swallow all of us. He wants to eat all of us. Hmm. His mouth is so big, it's like a big cave. We can't, and they were talking, should we go in? Do you th what do you think? Should we go in there? When, and when, when he opened his mouth, the big tongue of the snake was like a highway. It was like a big highway which went right inside the stomach of the big snake. So they thought, if we, if we all enter into the mouth of the snake, you, will it swallow all of us? They thought about it. And they thought, well, if he swallows all of us, it cannot, it could not swallow Krishna. Krishna will not let him swallow him. We know Bakasura tried to swallow Krishna. He swallowed Krishna, but then he had to bring up, he had to put up, Krishna came back out. After Bakasura had swallowed him, Baka, Krishna came out alive. And then he killed Bakasura. So Krishna was also looking at Agasura and Krishna thought, Oh my goodness, look at this demon. Krishna, this demon's really done it this time. He's got this huge body, eight miles long. So horrible body, a big snake. But the coward boys, they're, they're not afraid. And they look at Krishna and they smile and they all walk into the mouth of Agasura. So the coward boys, they didn't know this was a big demon, they didn't understand, but they thought anyway, if there's any danger, Krishna will be here to protect us. Uh, 
So all the coward boys went in, and then Krishna didn't go in. So the, de the demon was waiting and thought, oh, i got to get Krishna. It's Krishna the one I want. I don't want all these coward boys without Krishna. Krishna's got to go in. So he didn't close his mouth. He kept his mouth open and waited and waited to see if Krishna would go in. The demon thought, this Krishna is the one who killed my brother and sister. I have to kill, kill him. So when Krishna saw all his friends, all the coward boys going to the mouth of Agasura, then he was, you know, he was. He thought, "Oh no, this is terrible. Why, why they did this? Why they're so foolish to go in there?" And Krishna thought, how wonderful the material energy is. Maya is so powerful that even those cowherd boys, so they walked into the mouth of Agasura. So, so Krishna has to think how to save all the boys and all the cows and at the same time kill the demon. So Krishna thought for some time, he waited for some time, and then Krishna also went into the mouth of Agasura. And when Krishna went into the mouth of Agasura, all the demigods who were watching, they were all upset and they said, Oh no, oh, Krishna shouldn't go in there. They were afraid. <laughs> But all the friends of Kamsa and all the friends of Agasura, they were very happy. They thought, oh good, Krishna's gone in the mouth of Agasura. He will also get smashed and eaten. Because the demons, they like to eat flesh and blood. They like to eat these kind of things. So when the demigods were all crying, Krishna was he could hear the demigods crying, Oh no, no, Allah, Krishna, oh, please. they were worried about Krishna. So then Krishna expanded himself. He made himself very, very big so that the demon couldn't breathe and he choked the throat of the demon. He couldn't get any more air. <laughs> So, because Krishna was so big, the demon couldn't, he, the demon suffocated, couldn't get any air to breathe. And what happened, his life air could not get out the body. It came, forced, it forced its way, it burst its way out of a hole in the body of the snake. It came out from the top of the head, the skull part. 
้แล้วก็ชีวิตเขาก็วิญญาณเขาก็ออกจากศีรษะ So when the soul of the snake Agasura came out, then it waited there for some time. It didn't depart. It waited there for Lord Krishna to come out from the body of Agasura. So all the cowherd boys and the calves, they'd all become unconscious in the in the body of Agasura. So after Krishna killed Agasura, then all the he brought all the boys and the cows back to consciousness again, and they all came out of the mouth of the demon. แต่หลังจากนั้นนะคะก็หลังจากที่เพื่อนเพื่อนของคริสต์นาออกมาจากร่างของมูตัวนี้เนี่ยทุกคนก็เป็นลมอยู่นะคะเนื่องจากยาพิษที่โดนไปนะคะเราคริสต์นาก็ช่วยพวกเขา And then when Krishna came out from the body of Agasura Then that effulgence, that spirit soul of Agasura, entered into the body of Krishna. So the demon got first of all Sayuja Mukti liberation. And then later on, he got Swarupya liberated. He got a body like Krishna in the spiritual world. Because Krishna had entered into the body of the demon. So the demon had become purified by having Krishna in his body. And just for a moment, the demon had some devotion for Krishna. And that qualified him to go to the spiritual world to become a friend of Krishna in the spiritual world. So all the demigods they were watching, they saw the Krish, how Krishna killed Agasura, and they all showered flowers on Krishna when he and they all worshipped him. And all the demigods in heaven, they were all dancing. They were all very happy. They were all offering prayers and chanting the glories of Krishna. The Brahmanas would chant Vedic mantras, and all the devotees would chant Jai, Jai, Jai Sri Krishna. So Lord Brahma, he is up there in the higher planets. And he heard all the demigods making all the noise and chanting and singing and glorifying Krishna, and he wondered what was happening. So Brahma came down from his place in Brahma Loka at the top of the universe. And he saw this big, eight mile, the eight mile long body of the demon Aga. So when he saw when he saw that demon's body, and he saw how he was dead. 
then he understood a little about how powerful and how wonderful Krishna was. So the, the body of the demon with the big snake, it, it lay there with its mouth open. After he died, it was left there with the mouth open for many days. And gradually the snake, the body of the snake just dried up. But the cowherd boys would enjoy to come to that place. They would play there and they would remember how Krishna had killed the demon. So Krishna killed this Agasura demon before he had become five years old. He was not even five yet. Okay. In, in the Vedic culture, when children are under five, they're called Kumar. And then from five years old to ten years old, they're called, they're at the Poganda stage. And then from the 10th year up to the 15th year, they're called Kishore. And then after that, then they're called youth. There are young men. So it happened that for one year nobody knew about the killing of the Agasura demon. Nobody in the Vrindavan village knew what had happened, how this demon Agasura had come in the forest and tried to swallow Krishna and all the cowherd boys. But when the boys, when the coward boys were six years, they told their parents about how Krishna had killed this big snake and how the big snake had swallowed them, Krishna had killed it. They heard about the pastime of this Agasura demon, but it, there was one year before they did they, before they heard about it. You know, something so wonderful like this big demon being killed by Krishna, you'd want to tell people about it immediately. So why did it take so long? Why did they wait one year before they talked about it? And it's very surprising that Agasura was a very sinful, you know, his name Aga means sin. So he was really sinful, he was a very sinful person. But Somehow he got this liberation. He got, first of all, entered the body of Krishna and then he got a form like Krishna in the spiritual world. Krishna <laughs> 
การอุปเขาเขาเนี่ยได้เข้าไปในตัวกริชนาหลังจากนั้นเขาได้รับการอุปนที่มีภาวะระกายเหมือนกับเรา So how did he manage to get that stage? How did the demon get that stage? We understand first of all because Krishna came in the mouth of the demon, so he purified him of all his sinful reactions. ทำไมมาตัวนี้ถึงได้รับการลุกคนแบบนี้นะคะเอ่อก็มีก็คือว่าเพราะว่ากริชนเนี่ยเข้าไปในเข้าไปแล้วก็แตะที่ลิ้นของเขานะมันทำให้เขาเนี่ยเป็นอิสระจากผลบาปทั้งปวงที่เขาเคยได้ทำ In the Bhagavad Gita, it describes like that also. Krishna said, "Even a sinful person, but if they take shelter of me, they'll quickly become purified. They'll become devotees." Krishna ก็ได้ตรัสไว้ในพระกฤติการเช่นกันนะคะว่าสมแม้แต่แม้เป็นบุคคลที่บาปมากถ้าเกิดว่าเขาเนี่ยเอาข้าเป็นที่พึ่งเนี่ยข้าจะทำให้เขาเนี่ยเป็นอิสระจากผลบาปทั้งหลาย So the de this demon, he got purified because Krishna entered his mouth, and 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 because Krishna entered his mouth, then he he s purified. Then he thought about Krishna just for a moment. He thought somehow there was some devotion there because you have to have some devotion to go back to Godhead. ประเด็นในระหว่างที่เขาเนี่ยคิดอยากจะให้กิชนาไม่อยากจะให้กิชนาเขาไอคือระหว่างที่เขาเนี่ยคิดอยู่ตรงเนี้ยค่ะมันมีความคิดที่แบบว่าอยากจะรับใช้พระองค์อยู่นะคะเพราะฉะนั้นมันก็เป็นประโยชน์ที่เขาได้รับจากการที่เขาเนี่ยคิด So he didn't he didn't go to Vrindavan but he could go to Vaikuntha he could get a forearm form like Krishna like like Vishnu แล้วก็แต่เขาไม่ได้ไปที่ Goloka Vrindavan แต่เขาได้ไปที่ Vaikuntha นะคะ Vaikuntha ก็คือจะมี Just, just like people, if they worship the deity and they think of the deity in their mind, so then at the time of death, if they're thinking of the deity, then they'll go back to Godhead. อาจารย์กุลมาก็บอกเช่นกันนะคะสำหรับบุคคลที่ที่บ้านมีพระปฏิมาแต่ถ้าเกิดเขาเนี่ยจิตใจจดจ่อกับพระปฏิมามากเวลาเขาตายแล้วเขาคิดถึงเนี่ยเขาก็จะได้ไปหาพระชนะ Sometimes when a person is dying, they will take him into the temple to leave the body in front of the deity. So we can understand somebody like Agasura. Entering into the body of Krishna. So then, we can understand this. So, Krishna is coming into the body of Krishna. So, Krishna is coming into the body of Krishna. So, Krishna is coming into the body of Krishna. So, Krishna is coming into the body of Krishna. So, Krishna is coming into the body of Krishna. So, Krishna is coming into the body of Krishna. So, Krishna is coming into the body of Krishna. So, Krishna is coming into the body of Krishna. So, Krishna is coming into the body of Krishna. So, Krishna is coming into the body of Krishna. So, Krishna is coming into the body of Krishna. So, Krishna is coming into the body of Krishna. Devotees, as devotees, we also want to keep the form of Krishna. We keep the form of Krishna in our heart, or we see the deity, the, the form of the deity in the temple, and in this way we keep ourselves always pure. หรือว่ารูปลักษณ์ของพระปฏิมาของพระชนานะคะที่เราชื่นชอบเราก็จะระลึกถึงแล้วก็คิดถึงพระองค์อยู่ตลอด So the form of Krishna is so powerful. We want to keep it always within our mind, thinking about Krishna, his beautiful form, his attractive features. พระชนานรูปลักษณ์ของพระชนานเนี่ยทรงมีเสน่ห์มากนะคะทรงสง่างามมากพระชนานเราเนี่ยควรที่จะระลึกถึงรูปลักษณ์ของพระองค์อยู่เสมอ So Agasura, he must have been on a. He was greater than ordinary devotees. He's greater than us, or even greater than yogis, because Krishna entered his body. So Agasura, 
ป็นก็เป็นดวงเงินผู้ยิ่งใหญ่ค่ะดวงเงินผู้ยิ่งใหญ่กว่าเรากว่าโยคีทั้งหลายด้วยนะเพราะเขาเนี่ยได้ได้เจอกฤษณะได้เข้าไปในร่างของพระองค์ so only Krishna could kill him and when Krishna killed him he went back to Godhead มีบุคคลเดียวนะที่สามารถสังหารพระราชก็คือกฤษณะ so Maharaj Parikshit he's hearing about the pastimes of Krishna from Sukadeva Goswami and he remembers How his life was saved by Krishna. ตอนนี้ก็เป็นช่วงตอนที่มหาราชปริชิตเนี่ยกำลังฟังนะครับจากสุขเดวสวามิเกี่ยวกับเรื่องราวของกฤษณะแล้วก็ทําให้ท่านเนี่ยและลึกถึงตอนที่กฤษณะเนี่ยปกป้องพระองค์ตอนที่ท่านเนี่ยอยู่ในคันของมารดา So Maharaj Parikshit considers himself to be very lowborn because he said I committed a great offense against the Brahmanas. That I put a dead snake around the neck of a brahmana, so I'm very offensive person. แต่สิ่งนี้นะปริชิมาด้วยความอ่อนน้อมถ่อมตนเนี่ยก็จะกล่าวว่าข้าเนี่ยเป็นผู้กระทําอาบัติอย่างแย่หลวงข้าได้ทําอาบัติโดยการใช้ร่างงูที่ตายแล้วเนี่ยไปใส่ในคอของพระ But at the same time, he remembers it was Lord Krishna who saved him. When he was a child in the womb of the mother, that the Lord came there and protected him. So Maharaj Parikshit has a good question that he wants to understand why it took one year before they discussed about the killing of the Agasura demon. แต่ทีนี้มาปริชิตก็มีคําถามนะคะว่าทําไมถึงตั้งใช้เวลาตั้งหนึ่งปีเนี่ยกว่าพวกเด็กเลี้ยงวัวเนี่ยจะเล่าเรื่องเหตุการณ์การสังหารอากาสุรานี้ให้กับครอบครัว So he wanted to understand what happened. How is it possible it took one year before they discussed it? เราบอกว่ามันเป็นไปได้ยังไงตรงนี้ทําไมถึงใช้เวลานานขนาดนี้ Maharaj Parikshit said, "I'm a shatri. I usually we're always very busy. We have to do a lot of business affairs. We have to manage so many things. Usually I don't have time to hear, but now I want to hear." Then Maharaj Parikshit will say, "Khan is a Brahmin, and so he is very busy with his work, his business, and his activities." ไม่ค่อยมีเวลาได้ฟังอะไรแต่ตอนนี้เนี่ยมันเป็นโอกาสที่ข้าเนี่ยมีเวลาได้ฟังเพราะฉะนั้นข้าพเจ้าอยากจะฟัง So he asked his guru Sukadeva Goswami, please tell me what happened. Why did it take so long before they talked about this? แต่ในท่านก็เลยถามพระอาจารย์ของท่านนะคะถามพระอาจารย์ของท่านว่าทำไมถามพระอาจารย์ที่เป็นเอ่อท่านชื่อสุขเดชบุษมีนาว่าทำไมถึงใช้เวลานานขนาดนี้ Alright Are there any questions โอเควันนี้ก็จะจบเพียงแค่นี้นะคะใครมีคำถามอะไรไหมคะใครมีคำถามอะไรไหมคะใครมีคำถามอะไรไหมคะ Gurudev, can I may I please ask a question? Okay, yeah. Thank you, Gurudev. Please accept some humble obeisances, Gurudev. Uh huh. Gurudev, does uh, Agasura have a past sign in a past life because he reached at such a level of purity that the Lord was supposed to enter his body? Normally, all the demons have a reason for their being born as a demon, or there's a past time related to the Lord. Going to enter their body or killing them or something. So does Agasura have one? Well, I don't. You you want to know Agasura? Does he have a pastime? Why Krishna would enter his body? Yes, 
ซเดมาตาจีก็ถามว่านะคะจะมาตัวนี้นะอากาศุระเนี่ยเขามีประวัติความเป็นมาอย่างไรหรือเปล่าทําไมเขาถึงทําไมกิชนาถึงแบบเข้าไปในร่างเขาแล้วก็ทําให้เขาเนี่ยได้รับความรู้พ้นแบบนี้ในอดีตชาติเนี่ยเขาเป็นอย่างไรบ้าง But I don't know of it. I've never heard of it from anyone before. But there must be some reason. It certainly indicated there that he was a great, a very great personality. But somehow he got that body of the demon. Hmm. <laughs> And he's somehow he's in the association of demons like Kamsa, and uh, his brother and sister are demons. But of course, Putana, she was also a great. Somehow she got liberation. Also, she got taken to the spiritual world. So uh, yeah, there's something. Definitely, there must be something there that I don't know exactly who is Aga in his past life, but there may be something we could look into. To get the kind of powers which Agasura had, you know, such yoga powers that he could make his body so huge, that he must have been a very great yogi. He must have had, you know, done a lot of austerity and penances to get that kind of power. And it's Lord Krishna's mercy which delivers him to the spiritual world. We want to understand Krishna. How powerful Krishna is! How merciful Krishna is! That because Krishna entered into the demon's mouth, so the demon could be liberated and he could go back to Godhead. Krishna purified the demon. <laughs> And uh, uh, is it we will know in the next class the reason for them to take one year to talk about this past one, the coward boys? Arjuna? But, yeah, if you see, the, the, the next chapter we'll hear about Lord Brahma stealing the cows. Lord Brahma stole the cows for a moment of his time. That's one year on this planet. So for one year, Lord Krishna took the place of all the cowherd boys and cows, which Brahma had taken away. Oh, okay, it. That means this pastime of Agasura and uh, the Lord Brahma sealing the cows must have been very close by. Yes. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Gurudev. Thank you.
Okay, any other question from anyone else? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance, sir. Hare uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, my question is uh, like, uh, is there any particular reason no. why Krishna chose to be a cowhead boy? Uh, is he uh, like why he has to take care of the cow? Does he want to tell the community how important is that or uh, yes? อือฮึมาเสเรมาจิทาถามว่าเอ่อทําไมกิชนาถึงเลือกที่จะเป็นเด็กเลี้ยงวัวคะทําไมถึงไม่เลือกเป็นอย่างอื่นมีเอ่อ
ช่วงพิรุโชธทำก็ก็มีคนแนะนําบอกว่าให้พยายามสวดมนต์เยอะๆเราก็สวดเราก็สวดเยอะแต่ว่าเราอยากให้กุลมาลาดแนะนําการสวดที่มีใจรักต่อคริสนาเยอะๆเราก็ยังไม่มีอารมณ์ตรงนั้นแต่ว่าเราก็ใช้เวลาที่ว่างเนี่ยสวดมนต์ก็ก็ก็เยอะอยู่อยากจะให้กุลมาลาดแนะนําตรงนั้นว่าทํำยังไงที่เราจะสวดแล้วเราจะมีใจรักต่อคริสนาโอเคค่ะอ่าค่ะอ่า this is a question from p u n a m a s i Mataji so she said that she heard from uh, devotees telling her that uh, in the Uh, special months like uh, auspicious month Purushottam or uh, Kartik that we should uh, chant more. She also been trying that like to chant more, but she like to ask like how to uh, chant with love or with devotion toward Krishna. How how should we like uh, increase that? Well, Prabhupada said when we chant. The mood should be like a child calling for the parents, just like the young child is away from their mother or father, so they may call like that. You know, no one else will satisfy the crying of the child. So in the same way, when we chant Krishna's name, we should call like that, but that we're feeling separation from our loving mother or father. กุลมาลาก็ตอบว่านะคะศิลปะพระเนี่ยจะบอกว่าอารมณ์การสวดมนต์ของเราเนี่ยควรเป็นในลักษณะที่ว่าเด็กน้อยเวลาเขาห่างเขินจากพ่อแม่เนี่ยเขาจะร้องไห้เพื่อที่จะร้องอยากจะเจอแม่หรือเจอพ่อใช่ไหมคะให้เราเนี่ยค่ะสวดเวลาสวดมนต์ให้เราคิดอย่างนั้นนะคะคือไม่มีอะไรที่จะทําให้เด็กคนนั้นหยุดร้องได้นอกจากการมาของพ่อแม่ใช่ไหมคะให้เราตั้งใจสวดแบบนั้นนะคะเมื่อเราอ Sometimes when we're doing kirtan, the person who's leading the kirtan he may call out to all the people chanting to chant from the heart. So he he's encouraging us to feel from the heart our connection, our loving relationship with Krishna. เพราะฉะนั้นบางครั้งนะคะเวลาลองเคทานก็จะมีนักลงเราบางคนก็จะบอกว่าได้โปรดสวดจากใจนะคะมันก็เป็นการส่งเสริมนะคะบอกให้สาวกที่มาร่วมสวดมนต์เนี่ยให้เปล่งออกมาจากใจ So love of Krishna is in the heart. We have to awaken that love, and the way to awaken that love is by hearing more about Krishna and by chanting more. And the more we chant, then the more we will awaken that love. ความรักต่อพิชนานะคะมีอยู่แล้วในใจเราทุกคนนะคะแต่สิ่งที่เราจะต้องทําก็คือเราจะต้องปลุกจิตสํานึกตรงนั้นเนี่ยให้ฟื้นตื่นขึ้นมานะคะโดยการฟังเกี่ยวกับพิชนาเพิ่มขึ้นโดยการสวดเกี่ยวกับพระองค์มากขึ้น And so many devotees, they go to Vrindavan. They would go to Vrindavan at this time, usually Kartik. Other people, they will observe Kartik at home. They will do more chanting. They will try to increase their devotion for Krishna. ในช่วงการติดนี้นะคะผู้คนเนี่ยก็จะเดินทางไปที่บริณฑาบันกันส่วนใหญ่หรือว่าบางคนถ้าเกิดใครอยู่บ้านเนี่ยก็จะถือศีลกันแล้วก็ Every day we want to sing d h a m m a d a r a s t i k a m prayer and offer one lamp. Yeah, offering one lamp. It doesn't take very long. Just a, a minute or two to light a lamp and offer it to Krishna and bow down. But it's very powerful. If you do it every day for a month. It's very powerful. จะเป็นอะไรที่เป็นดีมากเลยนะคะเป็นสิริมงคลมากไม่รู้มาบอกมันไม่ได้ใช้เวลานานนะคะอาจจะใช้แค่สองสามนาทีก็ร้องเพลงแล้วก็ถวายถึงถ้าเราทําได้เดือนหนึ่งเนี่ยก็จะดีมาก So you can do it any time. You can do it any time in the day or 
You may do it in the morning, you may do it in the midday, you may do it at night, doesn't matter, that's not important. What's important is the mood, the attitude, that we do it with love. So when we chant, we want to chant with love also. There must be, the chanting has to be with the, that mood that you know that you, just like when you talk to your, your granddaughter or your grandchildren, you know, you would talk very kindly with them, you know, you have a loving feeling for them. So when we're chanting to Krishna, ch calling Krishna's name, we should also have that kind, that kind of mood, that loving feeling for him. So Krishna can hear, he's a person and he knows how much we're paying attention, how much we're feeling when we call his name. Just like someone, someone, you know, somebody may say our name and we know how they're saying our name, we, we know they're not saying it, you know, very, very sweetly. We know when somebody's saying the name nicely, when somebody really being nice to you. So Krishna is a person, we have a relationship with him. We want to cultivate the right mood when we chant his name, call the name with love. Okay. So thank you very much, Archana. Very kind of you. Thank you very much. To thank host you. us here. Thank you, Guru. Thanks to all the devotees for listening. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Go back to Krishna Ki. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.